talk about stigmatized properties. When do you tell and what do you tell and what really constitutes a stigmatized property? Well, basically uh, the best definition for stigmatized property in my opinion would be a property that has um, an issue which is affecting its saleability or value. So if we take a look at a couple of uh, scenarios uh, that could qualify as stigmatized, um, let's talk first about death. So there's death uh, where somebody has died in the house and then there's death where somebody has been, let's say, killed or murdered in the house. Well, in the case of, uh, of, a, of, of a killing, is it a stigmatized property? I believe the answer to that question is pretty simple. Yes, it is stigmatized. And most people in the, uh, in the industry agree that uh, a killing at a house can affect its value and can affect its saleability uh, for certain. So that kind of information is readily available. And if not, the neighbors are going to tell people. So at the end of the day, does it classify or does it qualify as stigmatized? I think it certainly does. So you've got to watch those scenarios. So if you know about it, and the seller does not want you to say anything about it, that, in my opinion, would be an unlawful instruction, and you would have to tell your seller that you would have to tell everybody and inform them um, and make them aware of what the situation uh, might have been, because it could be from out of town and never heard about it, and so on. So that definitely qualifies. Well, when somebody just, uh, let's say, passes away from an illness or whatever in the home, you know, is that a stigmatized property? In my opinion, it is not. Uh, now, there is a, a moral judgment call on these types of situations, and if you feel morally obligated to tell people that somebody has passed away, uh, then you certainly need to get your client's permission to do that, because you may be, in fact, stigmatizing the property uh, without knowing it by revealing that uh, information. So that's something you need to really check into with your seller. Um, but certainly if somebody's just passed away, that's a natural process uh, that's probably happened in many homes and, and nobody really knows about it. So for the most part, uh, a natural death is, is really not a stigmatism for, uh, for definition uh, in the sale of property or houses. Um, one other one that I'd, uh, I'd like to just touch on is uh, grow ops. So, there's a lot of documentation and legal um, direction as far as grow-ups are concerned, but do you have to mention it after the fact? So it's all been repaired, a year's gone by, everything's great, the house looks like new, it's on the market. Do you have to let the um, incoming buyer know about it? Well, quite frankly, uh, the Real Estate Council says no, there's no legal obligation for you to say anything about it. But this is where um, the, your legal obligation and your moral obligation uh, are going to uh, be at odds. Because I think you need to ask the question of yourself. Do you want to know or would you want to know if uh, the house you're purchasing had previously been a grow up, even, even if it had been fixed? So. It's a question that you're going to struggle with. Is the property stigmatized? It's a difficult question. According to the law, after it's been repaired properly and uh, brought back to its natural state properly, uh, they say no. I say ask the vendor for permission to let people know because I want to know. So it's just a couple of areas. Check it out. Check with your broker. Check with me. I give you my opinion. In the end, uh, you're going to make a decision uh, and uh, inform your clients according to what you feel is the best thing to do. Once again, make our team great.